the previous videos, we mentioned about the importance of knowing the assessment criteria given by your lecturer in order to assess your assignments. These assessment criteria are normally made transparent to the students. It is basically a guide for the lecturer to evaluate the performance of the students, which at the same time, it is also a guide to you as a student to score well in your assignment. Normally in these assessment criteria, the scope of assessment, the expectations of the lecturers, as well as the scoring criteria are clearly outlined. We have covered an example in terms of the assessment rubric for the oral presentations. We also discuss how do we interpret the descriptions given in terms of the assessment in the form of the rating scales as well as the criteria of assessments. As different lecturers may use different rubrics, you will need to look into their rubrics, spend some time to analyze the rubrics in order for you to know how you're going to score your assignment. The rubrics which is given by your lecturer may be different from this one. However, the principles of analyzing the rubrics is applicable. In these videos, we are going to proceed our discussions for the assessment of the structural plan of the assignment of reinforced concrete design. Again, this is an example. You will need to refer to the rubrics given by your lecturer in order to score accordingly. Based on the rubrics given, there are three main criteria. The first one is self-explanatory and effectiveness of the structural plan. The second one is the technicality. And the third one, it will be the effort and aesthetic aspects. We're going to look into every single criteria one by one. First, the structural plan needs to be self-explanatory and it must be effective. That means the structural plan needs to be standalone covering all the necessary informations that allows the contractor to build the structure without needing to refer to the other source and it should be easily comprehensible there shouldn't be any ambiguity in terms of the information given in the structural plan and the contractor does not require to guess for certain missing informations all the essential informations, such as level, specifications and others, are appropriately given. There shouldn't be any contradictions in terms of the informations, and there shouldn't be any redundant informations. All the informations need to be relevant to the structures. The weightage is 0.25. Whichever rating that you have obtained, it will be multiplied with the rateage, which is later to be translated into the marks for your structural plans. The second aspect that we are looking at is the technicalities. Where the proposed design is thorough and technically viable. That means the design is complete covering every single scope of it, all the necessary design considerations are considered and it should be technically viable. That means it is achievable, safe and stable in accordance to the engineering principles. All the structural elements are properly displayed because we are talking about the structural plant that means they're going to be detailing of the structures. All the structural elements are displayed and it should be the outcome of the design and analysis that you have done through the assignment. Next, the structure can be easily constructed by the site personnel without requiring additional information or further clarifications. 
This one is more to the technical aspect as it is categorized under this category which you need to demonstrate your awareness in terms of the practices in the industry there shouldn't be any contradictions and the site personnel must know how to construct the building based on the structural plan that you produced your design should be in line with the local practice which does not require the contractor to seek for further technical clarifications Next, there shouldn't be any conflict between the architectural and the structural plans That means you need to be very familiar with the architectural plans where your structural plan fit nicely with the architectural plan given by the architect There shouldn't be any compromise in terms of the architectural drawing especially in terms of the aesthetic views Theoretically, you will need to hide all your reinforcement and the structural member within the architectural views of the structures in ensuring the stability of the structures This seems to be quite simple which in fact involves careful considerations of various aspects You need to consider the structural aspect as well as the aesthetic aspect of the building the weightage here is 0 0.75 which is the highest among the three criteria here this implies to you the significance in terms of the technicality aspects in your structural plan and that will be the major emphasis of the assessment you should put more effort in terms of the technical aspects ensuring it is thorough covering all the necessary structural elements and it is in line with the architectural drawings next we look at the efforts and the aesthetic aspects this one is referring to the neatness of the structural plan tidiness as well as aesthetically pleasant of your structural plans the plan should be produced in a professional manner and easy to read You need to demonstrate good effort and sufficient times that are invested in accomplishing the drawings Every single detail as given in the structural plan will need to be done properly and also all the dimensions are in appropriate scale and shapes it is not simply sketching in fact it is produced by using the AutoCAD in accordance to the proper scales the aspect ratio should be right and the shape should be correct this one will give you the weightage of 0 0.25 with the maximum mark of 1 mark in total there will be 5 marks for the structural plan as given in terms of the marks allocations for the assignment next we look at the written report again there will be three main assessment criteria, which include the planning executions teamworks the technical aspects as well as the writing part let us look into it one by one first we look at the first criteria planning, executions and teamwork you will need to demonstrate adequate planning, executions and teamwork through your assignment in your written report and it is a requirement for this assignment that all members contribute to the assignment the weightage is 0 0.25 with the maximum mark of 1 marks and then for the technical aspects the assessment rubric breaks it down in the more refined manners instead of having everything lumped in one weightage we're going to look into it one by one clearly outline the design considerations which is justifiable this one is referring to the data or considerations that you have made 
for you to carry out the analysis and design of these structures. Different design considerations will yield you different design outcomes. Therefore, you will need to carefully analyze the structures, consider the conditions of the structures, as well as the factors that can affect your analysis and design. For example, the soil conditions, the materials you use, the exposure conditions of your structural elements, and etc. All these design considerations needs to be justifiable. In the case that the situation is not clearly stated, based on the information given by your lecturer, you may make some justifiable assumptions and put those assumptions under the design considerations and you will analyze and design accordingly. This is the weightage as well as the marks allocated for all these criteria. Next, the calculation steps should cover all the necessary checks and design. Every single element that you design needs to be thorough and it should be carefully checked to ensure the stability of the structures. In the case that your proposed design during the calculations you realize that it's going to fail, you will have to revise your design until you come to a state that it is stable and pass. It is always good for you to run numerous design and checks in order to ensure the design produced by you are fully optimized. Try to minimize the chances of over-designing a structural elements. Even though the structure can pass, but it is not economical. You should also demonstrate sound engineering knowledge and adequate understanding in analyzing the problems as well as designing solutions. This can be reflected based on how you're going to adopt the design considerations in your design. It is also reflected from the calculation steps that you have demonstrated in your written report and it is also reflected in the technical drawing that you produced whether there are any mistakes that you made or whether there are any technical aspects that you overlook that affects your designs this can also be observed through the discussions that you made based on the design outcome that you have sufficient engineering knowledge for you to produce a good design. Next, the design outcome are properly summarized and in line with the engineering plans provided. This is very important and based on my personal experience, most of the assignments have this problem. It is especially when different members in the group are given different parts of the work where the informations are not fully synchronized. There will always be contradictions in terms of the information summarized in the written report and the information disclosed in the structural plans. Based on the assessment criteria here, you see that the major weightage it will be on the technical aspects. Within the four criteria here, the second and third seems to be more important over the others, which you will need to demonstrate adequate engineering knowledge for you to accomplish the project. Next, we look at the writing part. The requirement is to have consistent format, free from grammatical, sparing and editorial errors, readable and easy to understand, and use appropriate terminologies. This one is referring to the basics of writing a report. And the weightage is 0 0.25. If you do your report well, you will be able to obtain one mark out of the total of 10 marks. 
now that we have covered the all three assessment related to your assignment which are the oral presentations the structural plan and the written reports you observe the emphasis on the oral presentations it will be purely on the presentations how well you deliver the message how good is your presentation skills and how fluent you speak in English when you deal to with the structural plan the technical aspects is on the emphasis it must be thorough technically viable and there shouldn't be any conflicting information between your structural plan and the architectural plans as for the report it is also heavily dependent on the technical aspects look into every criteria and you will need to do accordingly fulfill the requirement in order for you to score well in your assignment and remember that the rating scales it will be in accordance to the rating scales given by your lecturers which if you read carefully every single rating it is possible for you to acquire full marks that means rating 4 for certain criteria of the assessment only that it is very difficult to achieve you must first exceed the expectations of the lecturers you must done all the required tasks related to that specific criteria and it need to be performed excellently and without guidance of your lecturers that means you take initiative to study on your own work out the solution yourself and those solutions must be good solutions although it is written here without lecturer guidance it doesn't mean that you cannot ask questions from your lecturers you can always seek for technical clarifications instead of waiting for the answers and solutions from the lecturers you should propose your own solution with proper justifications and seek for the advice from your lecturer or ask your lecturers to comment if you are in the positions of asking questions hoping for answers and solutions given by the lecturer that one it will be under the guidance of the lecturer if you are in the positions of asking questions that your lecturer do not directly give you answers but he give you some hints instead or giving you some directions or guide you to certain references for you to proceed with this searching for the answers that one it will be with supervisions this is meant by the minimum supervisions it is only when you have your own solutions up front seeking advice and comment from the lecturer which you do not rely on the lecturers to give you answer and you do not rely on the hinge of the lecturer that one will be considered as without the lecturer's guidance it doesn't mean that in order for you to score full for certain criteria having the excellent performance you cannot ask questions from your lecturers there is one more thing that it is possible for you to not scoring any marks for certain criteria this happened when you are unable to perform the required tasks or those required tasks are not performed and even with constant guidance from the lecturers or the peers you also cannot produce it that means it is possible for you to score zero on certain criteria I would say that most of the students will fall in between 2 to 3 ratings those who are meeting the standard will get 3 and those which is slightly below the standard will get 2 unless there are significant shortcoming or certain lacking which seems to be quite critical it is also possible of you getting the rating 1 therefore you need to do your assignment properly